Hello again and welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with His Latter-day Saint. And in this episode we're getting into the threefold creation mythology that past men have tried to understand in the chaos. What does the chaos mean? And all of these things that are unfolding in our times as well. So you could say the plan of God. And it all had to deal with this war in heaven at first. Or you could say man's lost and fallen state. And how there was a mind substance in the beginning. So the light is life. And as it says in the book of Lucius there, in the Colburn Bible, God reveals to us like a higher life, a new Jerusalem. So this new Jerusalem was being prepared in the beginning. So in the King Paranjana parable, there's, you could say, the old Jerusalem. So this human body or the dead branch or man's lost and fallen state. And the spirit souls. So this creation, we're going to get into the second fold of creation. So it all started how God caused a dragon to come out of the heavens. And that dragon in the Colburn Bible uh, destroyed, you could say, the first creation. Or in the chaos, there was a troublemaker that destroyed the first uh, creation. How creation is layered, let's say, that Holy Spirit that hovers above the waters, that hovers above the chaos, it first carved six rings, or you could say the Lord of the Vineyard put his hand in the soil and went six inches deep in the ground, so dug a hole. So the Lord of the Vineyard, or the Holy Spirit, dug a hole, this six-layered realm. As you can see here, this is a depiction of the nature spirits, or you could say the forces of Satan. And this is the early formations now of how when God caused a dragon to come out of heaven and destroyed the first creation. These forces were in charge of making the second creation. And that's what this talk is all about today, of the formations of the second creation. And as you can see, it's layered off of six firmaments, or six heavens. And what does that mean? In the Apocryphean of Moses, he's given the revelation. So there's an activity like our firmament. This electromagnetism generates electricity from the north and south poles. And this is considered a firmament that makes a sky. So you could say it's one level or the first heaven. The second heaven or the second firmament. Now this is when we get into coming into my kingdom so we're digging up the pearl of great price these second layers or second heaven or third heaven or fourth fifth and sixth they operate in the spiritual realm so you could say these activities generate man's conscious experience so the second heaven generates for him you could say rain or conscious experiences of pain and pleasure then the third layer of creation gives him another uh, experience and that experience in the Apocryphean of Moses was a unlimited being with unlimited heads <laughs> but it has a function in nature that provides you could say harmony to the outer material world so just like a cake this spirit that hovers above the waters in the first chapter of Genesis carved out six layers, or there's a six-layered cake, just to make it simple. So, we'll go to the beginning here, when it says, at uh, Luke chapter 10, uh, verse 18, He replied, I watched Satan fall from the sky like lightning. See this fall from the sky. So we're going to get into how you could say the early formations of creation were formed and how man fell into a lost and fallen state is because of these first rulers so that's what it says in the Pistis Sophia mystery just understand that there's a prime ruler or what they call a prime parent and see these spiritual beings how they give man his experience it's just no different than when you have a child or when you or babysitting someone or you're with your friend you're you're given two individuals and now you're guiding your experience into a set of activities 
So you and your friend might play video games. See how you're guided into an activity? It's no different with the mother and the child, right? She guides her child, you see, because the child doesn't have certain faculties, especially the spiritual faculty or the pearl of great price. So that's what these prime parents were supposed to do. They were supposed to groom their creation to the light of God that they witnessed in the beginning. So they, this Holy Spirit that hovers above the waters, God, the Lord of the vineyard, now placed a seed in this hollowed out hole. You could say the first rulers, the prime parent. And then this Holy Spirit, or you could say from the thought of God, the thought of God now, or the Holy Spirit that hovers above the waters, so the thoughts of God penetrated into this hole. And from this penetration generated spirit minds. So thinking. So as it says in the paraphrase of Shem, there's a light, so these sparks, and then there's this first ruler, a darkness. So this is how God in the beginning separated the light and the dark because there's his pearl of great price in between this phenomena. So when the farmer put the seed in the ground, spirit minds sparked from this big flame of the prime parent. But the prime parent or this big flame was supposed to guide the spark back up to the Lord of the vineyard. But it ended up trapping the smaller sparks or the spirit mind or the seed. Just imagine how you plant a seed in the ground and the ground is trying to trap the seed, not making it grow. That's exactly what this life turned into. So the prime parent, you could say, trap their son into just limited activities or their creation. So when God caused the dragon to come out of heaven, these rulers of matter tried to now trap you could say the image and likeness. So when they said in the second chapters of Genesis, come, let us make man in our image and likeness. Well, they tried to trap, you could say, the light of God into the soil. So into the, basically the six firmaments. And they tried to keep them down there. Or how a veil over the seventh heaven. So the Lord of the Sabbath, we'll get into this. So we'll, we'll explain now how out of this six-layered cake, there is a seventh layer. So we'll go into the Quran because the Quran really gives a good insight to this. Uh, Quran 56, verse 59. It is you who create it, or are we the creators? We have decreed death to be your common lot, and we are not to be frustrated. From changing your forms... And creating you again in forms that you not know. See the second creation? That verse is so mysterious because we change your forms. Or get an understanding now how Adam in the first book of Adam and Eve. When Adam gets out of the garden. See this is how man had a bright nature. We're getting up to the point where the dragon came out of heaven. Or God caused the dragon. Or as Jesus Christ says he's seen this dragon. And now how this image of God came. See, the forms that we create you, we create you again. So this is the second formations, this creating again. We're not even at the point of Adam and Eve being in the Garden of Eden. And we're not even at the point of being in the external world yet. When God caused the dragon to come out of heaven, we're still in the spiritual world. This is the early formations of matter. This is how ancient man is. So you can see the ancient mythologies, the Norse traditions and the Greek traditions and the Japanese traditions with the Shinto, and the Chinese traditions. These all came from the spiritual realms. This is how man was created and formed by spiritual beings, or you could say the first rulers of matter or Satan or this dragon. This dragon went to form man out of the image and likeness that it's seen. So we'll start right at the beginning, right? So now we'll go to the chapter 57 of the Quran. 
to him belongs the heavens and the earth. So this is verse 2. Is he who gives life and death and has power over all things. He is the first and the last. So that's what the rulers of matter seen. They seen the Holy Spirit that hovers above the waters. And they tried to capture that image. They said, come, let us make man in the image that we've seen. So this Holy Spirit that hovers above the waters. And then our image and likeness so this reforming this is how god now as it explains in canto 3 of srimad bhagavatam chapter 26 just imagine you have a pool of water in front of you and your hand goes over the pool of water to make a shape of a human but as you can see no human comes out of it no human is able to rise you see in this when god caused the dragon to come out of heaven just imagine that god the supreme person or this bright nature this illuminous man took his finger and now that this creation was destroyed you see this dragon caused a destruction to its first earth and god had to reform it again out of the shadows of chaos or the forces of nature but the way he did that you see God formed this creation out of nothing as it says in the book of Hermas just like when we put our fingers over the water God had to put his finger over these smoky misty darkness forces and he drew with his finger his invisible man or the invisible God or the image and likeness of himself you see and then just imagine now the water pops up a man so the forces of the water or the forces of nature that's what you could say satan and his hosts did they formed the city of the nine gates in the image of what they seen so that's how god caused nothing to come out of something through these forces of nature that were or this dragon that was cast out from heaven so he it is who created the heavens and the earth in six days. That's very important because on the seventh, see the Sabbath, we'll get into that or the seventh heaven, the seventh layer. This is where this war in heaven started. And this is how now the rulers of matter, yes, they made their man in the image that they've seen in the beginning, right? So this carving of the finger of the water. But they tried to trap this creation out of their own forces out of their own shadow because of i hated you in the beginning so when satan was hurled down he was jealous of this light man that he's seen or of god or he was jealous of this image and likeness that god formed out of the shadows out of the nothingness and satan and his nature forces want to trap this form that they made in the image and likeness of god in their shadowy abyss or when they said to adam we'll reveal to you another kingdom this fiery kingdom so that's how they you could say in this allegory of when king paranjana he's outside of the nine gates and he's wandering around you see that's very important because at this point of you could say human evolution or conscious evolution souls were being drawn from another place or as you can see this treasury of light and they're being drawn into the nine gates so this is what you could say happens before birth king paranjana was walking around wandering around see this is what constitutes you could say the old jerusalem or this lost and fallen state king paranjana was in a lost and fallen state and he was wandering around for a place so when god caused a dragon to come out of heaven it blocked man away it, it created a veil and now this seventh heaven this lord of the sabbath or the six layered cake it formed an invisible layer or as he says here they created the earth in six days so verse four in the quran and then more however he established his throne of authority so the lord of the established sabbath the seventh day you notice how the rulers of matter see they created the creation in six days 
or how Adam, the, the, the first Adam, as it says, is a being of spirit. So that's the Lord of the Sabbath. And how now there's a throne established. And once they established the throne, that's when Satan and his hosts started this war in heaven. So that's, you could say, this first cycle of human evolution. There's a war in heaven after the six days were established. So out of repentance, you see, this Sabbath or this light, as it explains in the paraphrase of Shem, this light in the beginning that was with the first ruler, or it came from the first ruler, since it was the son of the first ruler of matter, or you could say when the invisible hand of God planted in this visible seed, this visible seed sprouts out plants, or it sprouted out the Sabbath, or the Lord of the Sabbath. But he had to repent because he seen this throne, or this higher man, or this faith in wisdom, or this higher woman, the Holy Spirit. So once the Holy Spirit hovered above the waters, this Sabbath turned into the Lord of the Sabbath and made the seventh heaven, or the throne was established. So after the throne was established, the first ruler got jealous because he's seen a spiritual light. See, that's when the Lord, the Sabbath who was trapped over this darkness over this fiery darkness right over the first ruler or this false ego see men are under a false perception a shadowy darkness the same thing with the light in the beginning or the Sabbath and when it seen the higher man it repented or how God separated the light and the darkness he separated the light and the darkness by what is called as the Lord of the Sabbath in the six days, by repentance and a resurrection. So it formed this resurrection power or this power of the Holy Spirit formed another layer and kept it hidden. Or that's how there's this formations of the hidden God now in this realm. Or how the Lord of the vineyard entered into the hole in the ground. <laughs> so just imagine you're a farmer. Not only are you planting a seed down there, but now you're planting yourself down there. So how the invisible I am comes into this realm. It came through one of the leaves, or you could see one of the seeds sprouted, or the first ruler had three sons, or the light of the mind. You see this light and darkness since the first ruler was ignorant. And then when the son of the first ruler, so the Sabbath, repented because it's seen God or the Lord of the vineyard a seventh heaven or a throne was established this bright luminous man came up it came up the first time we're not even at the point yet where this nature force made man the second time and an Adam see we're not even at Adam yet this is the Lord of the Sabbath it too sprang up out of darkness with a luminous nature and made another kingdom that happened as another pattern when the second Adam uh, or when, when they breathed in their breath into Adam and he rose he rose with a luminous nature so this is the second soul endowed Adam and we're not even there yet at the patterns of creation and then the third Adam came out of the garden see in the book one and two of Adam and Eve he came out of the garden with a bright nature or how King Paranjana now enters into this dull matter into the nine gates or he loses his bright nature that's because now the nine gates are formed with this dragon and when the lord of the sabbath or this war in heaven see it sealed the lower realms or men became ignorant or the first ruler or satan was prideful and ignorant and death formed over these lower realms or created a seal so the cross the father the son and the holy spirit is what sealed off the lower six realms and sealed off the seventh realm or the throne and he became the lord of the forces so we'll get into now how the lord of the forces or how this 
life, you could say, is all about this love that man fell away from. And oh, I got the wrong scripture here. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so we'll get into the point now where Jesus Christ in Luke 10, he's seen the dragon fall from the sky. Okay. So now this dragon fell from the sky, the second battle or the second cycle of creation. The first cycle of creation is when the Lord of the Sabbath made the seventh heaven and then kicked the dragon out of its realm. So the dragon had to go back or the first ruler had to go back into this earth or into this sixth heaven and recreate it again because it destroyed it or the troublemaker destroyed the realm. So now we're getting into this recreation of the second earth or the second cycle of how now Satan or this dragon formed the nine gates and it tried to now trap King Paranjana or these souls. See, because there is a war in heaven, the souls now, that's why in, in, you can say in the Pearl of Great Price or in the Book of Moses there from that work with Joseph Smith, the Lord of the forces or God on the throne asked Satan to save, you could say, the lost souls. So King Paranjana walking in between birth and death or in between a home, you see, or this lost and fallen man or this light of the mind in the beginning. And God asked Satan to do this task, but that's when this pride and arrogance came in. So in that manual, it says that his most beloved son came. So that's also what it says is out of the Lord of the forces, a being known as Jesus Christ came. <laughs> and that's when my most beloved was with me in the beginning, and he is the Savior. So the patterns and the early formations of the Savior out of the seventh heaven. See, when the dragon was kicked out, there was an eighth heaven or an unknown God, as it says in the Acts 17 in Greece. So out of all these religions, right, you notice how they don't have a God. They just have these chaotic forces of nature or God's many or polytheists. Yes, that's very important because now after the fall or out of the dragon, right, out of the lost and fallen state, men did not know God because the realms were sealed off. Remember, the throne was established. And Jesus Christ appeared out of that realm and formed, you could say, his own or the one God or the one realm or the eighth heaven. So now this first ruler is forming out of his forces. You see, all, all, all of these are the forces of nature or the forces of Satan. And they have to form creation again but they don't know really what to do. So we'll get into the origins of the world here. And now after the dragon is cast out, we could say after the dragon is cast out now, the dragon says, it is I who am God and no one exists apart from me. And now because he said this, they might not know that another had been in existence before him. You see, it's all about the ignorance of God here or this unknown God. This theme or this early pattern of creation was trying to bring out the unknown God. But this first ruler or this dragon or Satan was devoid of understanding, scoffed at the condemnation and acted recklessly. And he said, if anything has existed before me, so the Lord of the vineyard or the Holy Spirit above the waters, let it appear so that we may see its light. So remember the gospel of Christ. We have to ask, seek, and knock. So after the dragon was cast out of heaven, this asking, this seeking, and this knocking out of, you could say, the invisible realms, right? So the perceptible realms are the six layers. The six layers of the cake were formed. And then the invisible, or the kingdoms of God, the seventh and eighth heavens formed out of this dragon being cast out of heaven. So a new layer of the cake were formed. 
And that's how the invisible God made itself known to the ignorant rulers in the beginning. Or that's how it can make itself known to us. Or that's, you could say, the gospel of seeking, asking, and knocking. So the whole cycle of creation now was this seeking, asking, and knocking. If anything exists above me. And immediately, behold, a light came out of the eighth heaven. So that's very important because that eighth heaven is where Jesus Christ is. Or the now this throne where he sits on a revered throne. So Jesus Christ, or the eighth heaven, full, passed through all of the lower realms now. So this is now the recreation of, out of the smoke. See, just like now you smash a rock and it just is all this dust and pebbles. That's what this dragon did to the earth. It basically destroyed it the first time. So now God had to recreate it again. And the first ruler was ignorant and didn't know how to form the creation. So God had to come down and pass through the smoke or pass through this darkness. And that's how God, with his invisible finger, went to form the early patterns of the second creation. So a light passed through all of the heavens. And when the prime parent saw the light, or when Satan saw the light, it was beautiful, and it radiated, and it was amazing. So you could see the transfiguration of the Christ on top of the mountain. You see how men have lost their bright nature, or their covenant with God? It's because of this dragon. And this dragon was ignorant of the Lord of the vineyard, or the Holy Spirit above the waters. And he was greatly ashamed. As the light appeared, see... No one knew what God looked like, the invisible God. See, that's why this human likeness appeared within it, and it radiated, and it was amazed. It was very wonderful to behold. So now the early formations of creation had to be with blood. So as it says in the book of Hermas, this shadowy beast, this first ruler, is a shadow of darkness. And now blood. So here's where the blood trials come in. So because they seen this light, right? The first ruler, Satan, and one of his hosts. So one of Satan's hosts also seen this light. And she desired to embrace the light. Or commune with this light. But she was not able to. So this is how when King Paranjana, see this is the early formations of mortal intelligence. So when our spirit souls enter into the body of the nine gates, this mortal intelligence formed, or from the ruler, so from ignorance, his daughter wanted to embrace the higher light, but she was not able to. Or when King Paranjana enters into the nine gates, there's now this mortal intelligence formed with blood or the nature uh, intelligence of man it's a she you see that's why they refer to the soul as a she and she had to be formed with blood so when she was unable to love she poured out her light upon the earth and since that day this is how the second Adam or that the emissary has been called Adam of Light. So this light that appeared out of the eighth heaven in the form of a bright-natured man, it started forming the blood of man, or the intelligence of man, because it came from, you could say, a repentance or a sacrifice. Or you could say how Demeter, the earth, formed Persephone, or the blood soul. It was all because of a sacrifice. So how Jesus Christ sacrifices his blood for the higher new Jerusalem, the spiritual woman or the Holy Spirit. So the second formations of man were from a blood sacrifice seen by a higher light. And the earth spread over this blood, the illuminous blood of Adam. So a holy man came out of it or the holy land of light. So that's when King Paranjana, his, his soul comes from this blood sacrifice now. So another grouping of souls are made from this blood sacrifice into a higher light. Or when it says that King Paranjana 
is wandering around now. See, we're not even at the formations of a body yet. This is just the formations of the blood soul entering into the new earth conditions. And how the blood soul entered into the earth conditions was a sacrifice to the higher light. Or how we're called. You see how these parallel? We're called to deny thyself and pick up the cross and follow the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ for retaining that original bright nature again. So this is the early formations of, you could say, the blood sacrifices, or how it says in the book of Hermas, the trials by blood and fire, how one has to now go through the fiery furnace of trials. So the blood soul was formed here, or how the blood and the soul of man in the early second formation was being created. And how there's a treasury of souls. You see, that's where King Paranjana came from. He's wandering around now because this dragon and God were forming the blood souls of man. And they still didn't have a place. They were forming the shadows of the nine gates. So out of that blood sacrifice, there's human love that appeared, or what's called as eros. And that's how these blood souls fall in love with the material nature. That's why we're more following the commandments of the invisible, because we're trying to see this enlightenment. We're trying to see if this <laughs> dazzling being of light will appear to us. And it, it's not from this nature. That's why God says, I am not from the world, or I called you out of the world, because God's light or this life came from another realm, the eighth heaven. It didn't come from these nature forces. So even the blood of man, his soul came from a sacrifice to this light. And now this blood was being contaminated with earthly desires or eros. Eros appeared. So in the blood of man, in the soul of man now, King Paranjana, he had eros in him. Or love of this earth. And he was wandering around now. So earth conditions were formed because of this lower, you could say, female intelligence. So when King Paranjana enters into the gate, enters into birth, automatically this blood soul is in him already. And it tempts him to love nature, form and effect, which lead man to hell. The early formations of matter, you could say, is when King Purunjana starts interacting with this female or nature blood force intelligence, which all came from darkness. And she takes King Purunjana out to the city of the nine gates. So with the two eyes, she's accompanied with lust. So that's how now the early formations of this shadow effect begin to form matter, is through lust, greed, envy, and jealousy not with the higher virtues of man. The second formations of creation in the chaos was now trying to trap these souls, these blood souls, into the nature effect. So we'll go to the Bhagavad Gita here in Canto 3. Uh, chapter 52 so when God caused a dragon to come down from heaven right and start the early formations with these nature forces <laughs> we could say text 50 when all these elements were unmixed the supreme person see this light emissary this light from the eighth heaven the origin of creation along with time work and the qualities of the modes of nature entered into the universe, just like it explains in the Origins of the World Doctrine. This light entered into this universe. And the presence of the Lord, an unintelligent egg arose. So the early formations of man, or the, not, the city of the nine gates. So out of these principles... We'll go to the text 51. From these seven principles roused the activity and united by the presence of the Lord. So that dazzling being that they seen, an unintelligent egg aroused, which appeared the celebrated cosmic being, or now what men known as Adam Kadmon. 
or you could say the uh, second soul of Adam, how there was three atoms. Now, this is the second formation of that soul of Adam, the cosmic being. This universal egg, or the universe in shape of an egg, is called the manifestation of material energy. So that's when now Satan and his host, or this dragon, were given this egg of material energy, or the nature forces, or these elemental forces create by layers of water, air, fire, sky, and false ego. See, their, their substance, when they said, come, let us create man in our image and likeness, that is the nature forces, false ego, because it's not created by the light of God, because God exists outside. God just gave them the patterns to form this invisible creation. Or how the invisible now comes visible. So the Supreme situated himself within. See, this is how now God entered into the creation. And how we put our finger on the water. So just imagine you have just the water. <laughs> and you put your finger over it and you start forming the universe but these nature forces had to fill it up and they filled it up with their own stirring so it says here now the planets were all formed by the invisible hand of the Lord so within this egg is the universal form of God whose body is the 14 planetary systems and parts but the supreme or you could say the thoughts of the Supreme situated itself within this universe, within this golden egg, and he divided it into many compartments. First, a mouth appeared. So remember, the early formations of man, God with his invisible finger, that light emissary that came down, gave these rulers of matter the early patterns of the soul of Adam. So a mouth appeared, but God had to divide that or make that mouth of a shadow and when a mouth appeared in him then came forth the organs of speech so this is how now the demigods or satan and his forces also entered into their man because god made that happen and he also placed over the mouth or the organ of speech the force of fire so remember satan and his forces are now making man with their image and likeness which is matter fire air earth and water so god, god carved out the hole of the mouth and then he placed a force of nature there fire so that's how men knew that they came from these smaller sparks of god or these demigods that's why in that time you could say in, in Greek history or in Japanese history or in, you could say the Norse history. That's how you, this idea of the chaos and all these other gods. See, these other gods now fashioned man by the invisible hand of God. These other forces you see on the wheel. See these forces of fire, how that's a wheel of red. Well, the supreme person, the light being, or the bright man, God, came and carved a, a mouth and then placed a fire god there, one of these fiery forces. This is the early formations of illusion, because as you can see, we, or God, takes us to his kingdom, or we must be reborn in his spirit. That's why this matter is an illusion. So after God carved out the mouth, the hand, see, he carved out the image of himself. And then he placed the force of nature there. So just imagine the water, right? We go back to the water analogy. And we start placing our hand on the water in the form of a man. And you see how our hand is rippling the water? It's making a force, this ripple effect. Well, God doesn't make a ripple effect with his invisible hand of creation. So when God moves over the waters, when he formed the mouth, there was no ripple effect. What made the ripple effect 
was these forces of nature, these lower powers. That's why these lower powers started to trap man into their own force. Or how this prison of the nine gates started to appear. So God, when he moves above the waters, he does not create force. God is non-power. As it says, well, that's the experience of God, the void, or the light of God, emptiness, formless, and void. God with his invisible hand carved. But these forces of nature make the ripples. So that's why now in consciousness, right, when we're devoted to the way of God, we understand that God is in the heart. God is right. See, this, this light emissary, as he tells us, if you follow my ways, I will reveal myself. And here's an idea of how the forces of nature have no effect with God. It's because the Lord of the forces. Remember, he made six days, or these six nature forces. And he placed his throne or authority over these forces. So when the disciples were on the boat and Jesus Christ was there, the Lord of the forces, the actual God, the invisible word made flesh. So when the forces of nature, right, were rippling against man's consciousness, he was afraid of the water. He was afraid of the boat. And Jesus Christ was able to control the forces of nature or to still the waters. Men are under this ignorant, shadowy darkness, and they ripple the ideas into man that he's in the city of the nine gates, and that the nine gates is real. See these forces of nature or the forces of wind that scared the disciples? They did not know the secret place of the Most High. And the 91st Psalm. Or that's the idea of the void now. If we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, God begins to dissipate these nature forces because that's how the creation was formed in the beginning. The light of God has control over the nature forces because the nature forces are actual persons. Satan, the dragon. And God gives us dominion over matter or these nature forces. So as it says in the epistle of Barnabas, this is a promise. See, this is what the new Jerusalem is all about. God's making a new city of the nine gates, or the one body, or the one mind in Christ. So this old Jerusalem has an activity of an ancient war inside of man's mind. So the city of the nine gates has a shadowy uh, death consciousness to it. And the pains of being separated from this realm because the Archangel Michael gave this dragon a wound or they pierced my side so these shadowy forces are not just a lovely time in existence these shadowy forces plague man with disease pain see how can a shadow hurt you that's oh how could how could See, if this creation doesn't exist, right, then how am I experiencing pain? <laughs> well, that's because when God caused the dragon to come out of heaven, this dragon also came with the wounds of death, or they pierced my side. So that's how a shadow feels pain. It's because God gave it, you could say, a seal of pain. That's why these nature forces and effects, see the city of the nine gates? It's a corrupted city. It's an evil city. So in John chapter 10, there's a wolf there. And the activity of the city, yes, there's this semblance of life, eating, drinking. But the activity, so when King Paranjana starts interacting with his own intelligence, that's this woman, this fiery force of will, nature's own will. You see how there's fire in the mind? Well, by prayer and following my commandments and my virtues, you unlock the secret place of the Most High. Or that's how you observe the Sabbath, 
the Lord of the Forces. And when one starts doing this, that's when these, or the outer life or external circumstances start to, you could say, cool off by themselves because now we brought down heaven or we're seeking, asking and knocking for Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit. So that's why there's, well, death and pain and that's why the master came down on the cross because the cross was given to overcome you could say the devil and his works so these ripplings up against the water you're a thought being right so every time the disciples think about the ripplings of the water the light of the mind always gets confused by believing that the nine gates is real so the material intelligence when the disciple or King Paranjana is interacting with the material intelligence. She doesn't know where she came from. She's a corrupted blood soul. Remember, she's a product of the first ruler. And when this product of the first ruler or this daughter looked at the light of God, it made a sacrifice. So when King Paranjana is interacting with this woman, she's already dead. She made a sacrifice, you see. And she sits behind a five-hooded serpent, or you could say the prince of this world, as Jesus Christ calls it. The prince of this world, or the elemental forces, bind the thoughts of the disciple into this shadowy realm and if the disciples do not dwell in the secret place of the Most High that's how this shadowy realm injects their thought substance with doubt Crit see what's behind the throne here is the shadowy forces of death not only is it just wind but it's doubt anger greed jealousy envy lust that's what guides this fallen lost soul or how the dead branches are formed. See, this is the creation of the dead branch. And the dead branches were formed from these lower forces of nature. Or when God carved out this man, or this nine gates. The old Jerusalem, or the old nine gates, is a corrupted nature soul. And this new Jerusalem... See, God is making a new interaction for the spirit souls or a new consciousness or a new kingdom. See, when the spirit souls now come in to interact in this world or they take up a body like myself, we're involved and engaged in the lost and fallen nature soul. And she is bound by the forces of death. So King Paranjana, when he interacts with this woman, the nature intelligence, she corrupts him into the forces of death and makes him forget his best friend or the light of God that enters in with him as well. Because God, you, as he says, you're not separate from me or you were with me in the beginning. So the New Jerusalem or digging up the pearl of great price is prayer. And God is preparing us a new city, a new Jerusalem. So instead of the five-headed serpent on the throne, or you could say the activity behind this world, it's not going to be death anymore, as it says in the new Jerusalem. There's not going to be any more death, sorrow, because men's souls are going to enter into a new city, a new body of the nine gates. And behind this throne is eternal life. And the intelligence behind the throne, so the woman behind the throne, is the Holy Spirit. So the Bride of Christ. The Bride of Christ sits on the one throne that has the seven colored rainbow. So now when King Paranjana <laughs> gets reborn... So this is what we have to do. We have to be reborn out of the old city, out of the old city of the nine gates. And we do that by prayer. So God is promising us a new city, a new spiritual body. Instead of this old corrupted 
city of the nine gates with the five-headed serpent or the prince of this world or the elemental forces of this world, you see? Or the uh, unchaste woman, the woman that doesn't know where she comes from. As Christ says, you don't know where you're going or you don't know where you come from. I know where I'm going. Or King Paranjana when he's wandering around in this old chaotic forces of nature in a lost and fallen state. With Christ, we know where we're going and he prepares mansions and those mansions are a new body and a new interaction. So man just interacts in this dead nature force. He doesn't interact in the kingdom of God or in the light kingdom. See, this new Jerusalem is going to have a throne, not with a five-headed serpent, but it's going to have a seven-colored rainbow. The infinite kingdom of God is going to be the new periphery. And the new intelligence of man is going to be the bride of Christ or the faith in Jesus Christ. So now, when King Paranjana enters into the new Jerusalem, after being reborn in the spirit, he's going to have an infinite consciousness. Because <laughs> God is infinite. That's the intelligence of God, or what we are trying to seek, ask, and knock for, enlightenment. And God is raising up a new Jerusalem in us with the bride of Christ, which is the intelligence or the light wisdom of God. So now when King Paranjana enters into this new city of Jerusalem, God sits on the throne. It's not death. It's eternal life. See, God promises us eternal life in this new city of Jerusalem, in the new city of the nine gates. There's going to be an eternal throne, immortality, and infinite life behind it. It's not going to be a wolf and a false ego leading man down into hell. No, what God's going to lead man now is into the eternal realms. And I don't really have a description of that other than here. So when King Paranjana enters into the New Jerusalem, he tabernacles with the Bride of Christ, which is God's infinite intelligence, or the Void. And now the Bride of Christ interacts with King Paranjana, and that's, you could say, the covenant of God, or the marriage, or the divine union. As now men are promised a spiritual kingdom. So the statue of Daniel. You can see that statue of Daniel. You can say that's the old Jerusalem. The old ways of man. The old activities of this dead nature soul. That has death as its theme. And it leads the King Paranjana down into hell. So the statue of Daniel. That wanders around on the earth of nature forces see it doesn't know that there's a higher realm and when God's new Jerusalem appears see this new light man or the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ it's supposed to crush the old Jerusalem or the old activity in the city of the nine gates and it's supposed to bring up a new kingdom come while in this creation this is the promises of God. For those that believe, their spirit soul or the spirit mind, the thought activity, will be removed out of the body. So just like when King Paranjana was wandering around the nine gates, God's going to take us out of this world and place us into a new Jerusalem, a new city of the nine gates. Where now the throne of God will be the activity of your consciousness. And you're not just going to interact with, you could say, uh, a, a lost and fallen state. Because that's also what happened with man, too. We have to search for lower love. So we'll go back to the Colburn Bible. Now God, or, or the plan of God for man now, is this divine union and love again with the bride of Christ. She'll be able to lead him to harmony and love divine, you could say. So that's what happened because of the fall. Man fell into an old Jerusalem with the devil and his angels. And here it is in the Colburn Bible. So chapter 5, verse 35. Dadam said, the fault is with this woman. <laughs> no, it's with the material intelligence. But 
we blame others. So that's what Adam did. He blamed this woman, just like Adam kind of blamed Eve. But Adam was in this old Jerusalem with the devil and his angels. And because he didn't, uh, or, or because he trusted the external world, he didn't trust God within. That's what made his fall or broke his covenant or they lost their bright nature. And here is why men have to suffer in the old Jerusalem with an old love, or you could say a corrupted love, a contaminated love. Because behind that is the devil and his angels, or you could say a lost and fallen state. And here's where it is. So why should I suffer because of this woman? And the spirit being said, because you two are now as one. The canker worms of disease and sickness strike both equally. But you shall not defile this place again. So that's when now King Paranjana loses the spiritual world or this light blood soul where man originated from after the second fall. So we're cut off now from entering into the spiritual worlds. Or how you could say the dragon was cast out by the cross. So the cross was given to man and it expelled him from the spiritual worlds. But that same cross of Jesus Christ brings us back into the spiritual worlds. And this veil, see now it tells us a veil became impenetrable, a barrier severing our two realms. So because of this lost and fallen state, or you could say King Parajana, he enters into the city of the nine gates and too many souls have now entered into this lost and fallen city, this old Jerusalem. And because too many souls entered into the lost and fallen state, they began to commit ill religion. So that's how Satan and his hosts tricked King Paranjana into the lower worlds or to form diseases and to block him away again from you could say his spirit within so there's a severing of barriers of two realms and they can't be easily expand there will be no means of communication henceforth men and women see this is now the, the theme of life the corrupted intelligence this is what the new Jerusalem is all about because God is giving man his intelligence because men are fated in love divine so henceforth man and women faded in love divine see this is what the lost and fallen state is or that contaminated mortal intelligence he fell into now this yearning for reunion men and women are fated to unite in love divine but shall be divided to ever yearning reunion they may cleave to one another seeking unity so this is what this old jerusalem or the law men are now under the law now so they're under this lost and fallen state but unless their efforts transcend the limitations see this transcendence this love of god again or that emissary of light they will be in vain so now king paranjana the spirit of man is severed from the whole and cast again into unconsciousness or darkness and darkness just means this dual life. The patterns are now not in the, in, see the bride of Christ, which is infinite life, <laughs> infinite, immortal, and eternal. No, now King Paranjana, who lost his estate with God, and we'll get into that in just a second here, is now cast down into darkness with the devil and his angels. The spark shall seek to return to the fire or otherwise it becomes nothing. So the web of fate is rewoven and the paths of destiny remade. So this second and third cycle of creation is all again because of a fall into nature forces and out of the light of God. And they have to return or else they're fated just for pain, pleasure, joy, sorrow, birth and death. So enough wickedness has been wrought by your willfulness and disobedience for the decrees forbidding certain things were for your own benefit. So again, this covenant, because this King Paranjana lost his relationship with the spirit within, man started forming matter, 
<laughs> matter was formed because of a lost and fallen situation. Or men began to be attracted by the lusty forces of nature. So lust prepared or propelled them. Not love, not the bride of Christ. So immortality was near their grasp. The children of God were driven out. So this is how now more of man's lost and fallen state. He's out of the spiritual worlds. And the guardians were sent at the gates to block man away. So from now, man was fated to fashion his own good and evil, his own spirit likeness, but he can't do it. He can't fashion his spirit likeness to enter back into the spiritual realms or to seek the kingdom of God because he doesn't know how, he doesn't know the way. See, that's what the way means. <laughs> How do you get back to uh, the kingdom of light when men now have to fashion their own selves and they can't do it because they're in darkness? So from this time onward, men have to fashion their own selves. And they were loathsome in respect to themselves and went apart and were mercifully veiled in dark depths. They said amongst themselves, so this is the Nephilim now. The Nephilim, let us dwell here in the darkness where men just practice these lower nature forces of hatred, lust, greed, anger, and jealousy. So let us dwell here in the lower depths of matter and prepare a place for others like ourselves, which is hell. See, God and how this works as he chooses you which day you're going to serve, if you don't believe in God or a higher force of power or, or even God itself, then man's spirit, his mind, his thought substance are in this dead nature force. And the dead nature forces don't, ha or see, like man's body, his own, it's not his own. <laughs> he isn't in his own body. He's in a dead nature force. And if he doesn't unbind himself from the dead nature forces, they lead man to hell. So that's how the darker regions of matter were created or man's spirit likeness. If men do not follow the way, then their likeness do not go to the kingdom of God. This is how the devil formed man into a trap of a prison, or how King Paranjana is trapped. And now King Paranjana does not know where he's from. So another parable here. The spirit of God is the only reason why we live our lives. So the Spirit of God now, who is not cut off, <laughs> God is never cut off. See, that's the whole point of seeking, asking, and knocking, because there is a higher realm and a higher light. So now we can't recognize our friend. This is Canto 4, Chapter 28 of Srimad Bhagavatam. My dear friend, even though you can't immediately recognize me, you can't remember that your past, that you had a very intimate friend. Yes, the Spirit of God. This is how you could say the Lord of the Vineyard planted the pearl of great price within all of us. And that pearl of great price is Him following His ways. But you see, King Paranjana, or the blood souls of man, unfortunately you gave up my company and accepted a position in this material body, in this material world. So a fallen soul my dear gentle friend both you and i are exactly like two swans we live together in the same heart see now god's teaching us how to tabernacle with him and escape this city of the nine gates this city or this heart that we live in is just like a beautiful lake although we've been living together for many thousands of years we're still far away from each other our original home or this new jerusalem my dear friend, you are now my very same friend. Since you left me, you've become more and more materialistic. And not seeing me, you've been traveling from different forms. So King Paranjana, wandering around, you see, he's been traveling. We haven't found the kingdom of God, that place of rest, or the new Jerusalem. The spirit souls have been in a lost and fallen state since the dragon was cast out of heaven. So you're still far away from me. You become more and more materialistic and traveling through different forms of this material world, which was created by some woman. See that sacrifice in the beginning 
or some nature force, the womb of nature. That's the corrupted intelligence that King Paranjana is interacting with. The corrupted nature force or some woman. And that's why being reborn, God gives us his intelligence, which is known as the bride of Christ or faith and wisdom in Jesus Christ. So that's very important to understand here too, is God's transforming this old city of the nine gates or the old Jerusalem, which was just created by the devil and his angels or by some woman. Now in that body, the city of the nine gates, there's five gardens. So see how this realm is an illusion? Because within this shadowy force, there appears a nature effect. But it's all an activity of thought that's being corrupted. The thoughts of King Paranjana are being corrupted by this nature influence. But the pearl of great price, or God, is within him. And God doesn't come from this world. My kingdom is not of this world. Or you had a bright nature with me in the beginning. So behind all of this activity, the senses is the soul. The soul is a person. However, because he is now hidden within the city of the body, he is devoid of knowledge. See, that's the thing too. God is hidden within this body, but you have to come to him or come to me. So my dear friend, when you enter in such a body along with the woman of your desires, you become overly absorbed in sense enjoyment. So when King Paranjana interacts with his substance, his own body, he gets uh, bewildered by the activity of this nature force and because of this you've forgotten your spiritual life or this war in heaven due to your material conceptions you're placed in various miserable conditions so because King Paranjana is interacting with you could say the corrupted nature she just feeds him the bread of the Pharisees ideas of this world and because people accept the ideas of this world of this corrupted contaminated intelligence they lose their spiritual identity or it blocks them away from material life or sorry from spiritual life and because of this over absorption in the fire of the material realm that places them in difficult situations so the wolf the wolf came to this steel kill and destroy men are placed in various miserable conditions within the city of the nine gates because they're interacting with their corrupted intelligence now this corrupted intelligence is created by God's illusory energy so that's why this nature force is all in an, an illusion of effect of lower forces so like rip, ripples on the water these ripples go to disturb the light minds of the individuals or the wolves come and they tempt man with uh, problems in life, suffering, sorrows and miseries. But God in the beginning made man hollow. So when we pray to God, we get the comforter. And that's what the comforter does. It unbinds us from matter or from the nature forces or from the city of the nine gates. So that's understanding the immaculate conception. God is immaculately conceived and was not engaged in the city of the nine gates. So when Jesus Christ, you see his city of the nine gates, he's interacting with the new Jerusalem or the bride of Christ or the light intelligence of God. His body or his city of the nine gates does not come from the corrupted uh, illusory nature. He's not an effective, you could say, a shadow. Or like when you throw a rock on the, on the water, that's the devil and, and the angels tempting your mind with many, many ripples of problems and effects. Well, Jesus Christ doesn't have that mind that ripples with problems and effects. His mind ripples with the bride of Christ, so the inspirations of God. And he interacts with the kingdom of God or the new Jerusalem. That's what his body is. He's the perfect body. And that's what he's preparing us. The fallen souls, if we pray to God, we too receive 
his body of the nine gates, the perfect light of God. And we do not interact with the corrupted intelligence. We interact with the bride of Christ, which is the intelligence of God. Or we don't interact with this illusory energy anymore. The reason why this nature is an illusion is because it ripples your brain mind with problems of its effects. And remember, following me, I'm in the heart. And when you keep following me and keep putting your thoughts, see that you're not going to be engaging in this corrupted body of the nine gates anymore, or the lost and fallen state, or the dead branch. Now you're going to be communing with the bride of Christ, or this pearl of great price. Or if you keep following my commandments, I will reveal myself. And that's how we walk with God, or how God unbinds us from this shadowy realm of death. And that's the activity behind, you could say, the brain matter of man, a lost and fallen state. So if he's placed in these miserable conditions, he has to pray to God. For both you and I, we'll get back into this parable, both you and I, in fact, my dear friend, are qualitatively not different. So God, again, tells us, the spirit soul, or King Paranjana, that you're in my image and likeness, and you're not different from me. You're not different from the infinite, invisible, immortal consciousness. So those who are actually advanced, who are in knowledge, do not find any difference between God and the individual spirit. It's just the individual spirit has taken up the activity of the old Jerusalem. And he confuses himself with the activity of the city of the nine gates, with forms of this world. And the forms of this world are generated in hell. Or they threw him in the lower regions of matter. So the formations of this world are generated in hell, like an oven. Just like when you have uh, cookies on a tray, you need to bake them in the oven. So these blood souls have to be baked in hell in order to produce the material body. And that's why God's preparing for us a new Jerusalem. And that's why the spirit soul is transcendental because its true relationship is God. Image and likeness. There's no difference in between you and me. So in your material condition, which the living being is affected and yet not affected, there is a difference between God and the living entity. So there's a difference between the light of God, that light emissary, and King Paranjana. A big difference. <laughs> in this way, both swans live together in the same heart. When the one swan is instructed, see, this is being obedient or surrendering. When we surrender to the pearl of great price or to faith and wisdom within ourselves, this is what constitutes enlightenment, or he regains his original Christ consciousness, which was lost. So regaining, you could say, the self, which was lost in the beginning, is what we're doing in this activity. God's preparing us for a, well, a new life. And that's the promise of the statue of Daniel. It's just that promise... It's like a labor. It's like a woman giving labor. Well, it's been laboring for a long time. That's why the forefathers, when Christ came, he says, well, when are you doing this promise? <laughs> when are you going to bring about this creation? So I hope that helped. I had a lot of fun doing this. And again, until next time, take care.